So you think you have what it takes to be an engineer? Engineering is to me an awesome profession, but it's not made for everyone. Whether you're trying to get into your engineering degree, you're currently in your degree, or maybe you're already out of college and you're working in the industry. It's always good to take a step back and kind of look at the big picture and see, is this really for you? Is this the life that you really want? And if you want to know if you have those engineering qualities that I believe are needed to be successful in this industry, you are in luck because today we're going to go over Keenan's engineering checklist. The top five qualities that I see in the most effective engineers with the last one, the fifth quality, being the one that I believe separates the regular engineers from the really prosperous ones. So be sure to stay all the way to the end for that. And whether or not you're an engineer at heart, everyone loves free money and that's where Webull comes in because Webull is doing a promotion up to the end of this month that allows you to get two free stocks valued up to $1,850 as long as you only deposit $100 on their platform. So click my link in the description below if that interests you. And if you'd be so kind to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see this dude from Hawaii talk about his engineering and financial life. And so now we'll go into engineering quality number one, you have to enjoy problem solving. I love solving problems. And that's really what engineering is all about. You use your background to come up with creative solutions to solve real world problems. And for me that went all the way back to elementary school solving like the mad minute and then into college and getting that satisfaction when you finally figure out the solution to a problem. And then when I'm finally in my job, when I'm actually creating things that are going to be put into the real world. And that's inherently what engineers are all about. So I'm going to throw a couple of pictures of different buildings that are built around the world. And if you look at all of these things, these are very complex problems that engineers needed to solve. None of those buildings could be built without engineering problem solving. So when you look at one of these buildings, what is your gut feeling? Is it, that looks really hard, why would anyone want to figure out how to do that? Or is your gut feeling, oh wow, that's really cool, I wonder how they actually did that. So like on a very basic level, I'll use like structural engineering for an example. The architect or designer will come up with some concept and it's your job to make that a reality. So you may not be solving the exact same problem from project to project, but you're going to be using the basic principles that you learn throughout your career in order to make good decisions to creative problem solve. And if this sounds like fun and you're sitting on the edge of your seat, let's go to number two. So number two, you have to enjoy engineering. And it's not necessarily all the time, but most of the time. And the reason I say this is that engineering concepts and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is not very interesting to like the regular person. I'll give you an example. So as you can see right now, here's like our shear wall and here's an opening in our concrete wall. So since concrete's bad intention, there's gonna be a thing called rebar, or reinforcing steel that goes into the concrete. And when you have an opening like this, you have to add extra. So there's probably gonna be huge stirrups. There's gonna be like, you know, long number, probably number eight, number nine bars in here. Sometimes they may even put a steel beam inside to reinforce this thing. So like, do you have any questions so far? See, there's nothing wrong with not being interested in this kind of stuff. But if these things and engineering concepts don't really get you excited at all, you're gonna be relatively unhappy when you finally get your job. So like for me, the fact that things can be built using you know regular engineering principles and you can create something that wasn't there before is pretty awesome. And I get to go into my job every day and know that I'll have an opportunity and challenge that I can use my ingenuity brain on. And I hope other people feel the same way too. So just think about what you're learning, all the concepts that you're trying to understand. And if that's really interesting to you and it keeps you engaged, Let's move on to number three. Engineers have a tendency to be hard workers. And again, that's kind of tied into the kind of work we do and the problems that we solve. Being an engineer comes with kind of high expectations from a society level. Like we got a pretty good degree. We should be using our brains to really be helping society be better. In engineering, there's deadlines that you need to meet and there's hours that you gotta put into your job. And sometimes there's a balance. Like I would say more on the private side, it's probably more fast paced. You're expected to work more hours. Or, or you can work on the public side for like the government and the state. Maybe the things that you're working on aren't so glamorous, but you might have a better work-life balance. But I would say in general, the better engineers that I work with are the ones that put in the time and the effort. And that's why it's so important that you enjoy the problem solving and you enjoy the work. I mean, if you're gonna be spending 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week doing this job, you gotta enjoy it. So like I get a lot of questions about how I avoid burnout. 
And for me, most of the time when I'm at work, it doesn't feel like working. I enjoy the problem solving aspect. I enjoy the work that I do. Whether I'm there 50, 60, 70 hours, I'm just trying to learn. And for me, that doesn't go for just engineering. It goes for any profession that you want to do. I just feel like it's very tough to work hard at something that you just don't enjoy. Engineering is not a place for you to just work for a salary. So number four, for the most part, engineers are relatively logical human beings. And that's why some people may say that engineers may be like socially awkward or maybe they lack empathy. Sometimes I may fall into that category. And engineers tend to take a very logical and systematic approach to life. And it kind of makes sense when you really think about it. We've spent our life calculating, figuring out issues, and finding that answer that we can box or circle at the end of the day. And we've been told our whole life there is one correct answer. And that can come as a double-edged sword because out there in the real world, there isn't only one answer. And even for me, I've kind of struggled with this. Like I wanted people to just give me the formula. How do you get it done? What are the steps I need to take? Just give me a checklist and let me figure it out and I'll just follow all these steps and make it happen. That's the logical side of me working and that's very good. Engineers like systems, engineers like logic. And that's what makes us so meticulous and able to solve complex problems. So that's very good because a lot of times logical people can take the emotions out of their decision making. And trust me, I enjoy conversing and talking with logical people. But this ties in nicely with my last point about balancing that logical aspect of being an engineer with more of the intangible side of having a team and business mindset. And this was what I believe separates the engineers that do, for lack of a better term, like the grunt work, for the ones that go on to be like partners, managers, things like that. So everything that I talked about before, the logical side, enjoying what you do, working hard and being logical will get you to be a pretty good engineer. But in my opinion, it'll cap your growth in this industry. If you want to be a leader of the team, there are times where you have to separate yourself from just being purely logical and have some of those intangible and empathetic qualities that make a really great leader. You have to know how to work well with people. You have to know how to manage different personalities. And honestly, that's not something that I see a lot of engineers really excelling at. And, I'm, and I put myself in that category. I sometimes struggle with all of that too. And on top of all of that, understanding your business and how it makes money will become very important as you move up in your career. So engineers, we're not just solving problems just for ourselves. It's for like a company or maybe if you own the company, it's just something bigger than yourself. And maybe as an engineer, maybe you're okay with not dealing with all this interpersonal stuff. Or maybe you don't really want to get on the business side of engineering. And maybe you just want to be the guy behind the scenes doing all the real engineering work. And that's completely fine. But I do think it is worthwhile to try to hone these skills just to kind of round yourself out as an individual and make yourself just a better engineer. Because hopefully out there we're all trying to be the best engineer that we can be. So those are my five qualities that I see in some of the better engineers in our industry. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me or maybe if I missed anything. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And hit the link in the description below so you can get your two free stocks from Weeble. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video.